Good afternoon. Um, it's an absolutely horrible day here in Worcestershire Shire. The Christmas jumper is out, available in this store. Um, I'm going to speak again to Richard from Challenge the Road because he's got an update on the Jaguar Land Rover being stolen stuff. He has now penned a letter to the CEO of, or acting CEO of Jaguar Land Rover, and he's got an update on what's been going on. And I think he's got a few more anecdotes to share with us as well. So let's get a Jaguar Land Rover insurance update from Richard. Right then, Richard, how are we doing? Yes, yeah, all going well. You've been... Weather's not great though in England, is it? Jeez. No, it's pretty depressing, isn't it? Have you got Have you got any tips for your viewers on how to stay positive when the weather's like this? Uh, well, I just went out for a drive, actually. Did you? I've got that taken and I just done the calls from the car because I'm working from home a lot and I just felt like I just needed to get out. You know, just, and then I just had a little walk um, just to free my mind up, really. You're loving your Taycan as well, from what I can tell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I really, really, really like it. Good. Yeah, it's, it's... That, was, that was three reallys, so uh, that is praise indeed. Yeah, I, I, I still, you know, I said on the videos that... Um, I think it's one of the best cars I've ever had all round. Yeah. I'm finding there's a few little bits, but I'll let that go because it's, it's, it's very quiet. It can also be very quick. Um, I really like the interior. It feels very modern. Um, I'm not having a problem with the size of it as well. I was thinking it would be quite wide and stuff, but I'm not. Because it is almost as long as a, a Range Rover, isn't it? And they're, it's they're, two metres wide. Yeah, they're physically quite big. So you're, <laughs> you're finding it's a, a good enough replacement for a Range Rover then? Yeah, and I haven't been back out in the van, but I really like the van. But I don't know what to do now because this car is so good. You know, I actually drove back in today thinking, where where do you go from here? Yeah. As long as you, you can, obviously, like having the charger at home has made all the difference. Yeah, yeah. You know, if I had a three pin charger, it wouldn't work. But the seven pin has been fantastic. Yeah, I bet. And I gather you've had a few people contact you and say, I, I've bought one. Yeah, seven or eight people have gone and bought take hands. I mean, that was one of the reasons I started the YouTube channel. I mean, I, I've watched a lot of reviews on cars in the past, and then it's been very different to my ownership opinion. Yeah. So it's, you know, and I'd say I've had a huge amount of cars personally, probably 160 cars, and I've, I've just got, a, you know, a nice bit of knowledge in there. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people have bought, like the Golf GTE video I've done, a lot of people have bought them. Um, it, my followers tend to, you know, buy it buy cars you know when i yeah. when i do a good review and it's a good car great stuff so the range rover that you've just come out of then you've you've sent the letter the letter's gone do you want to fill us in on what's happening yeah so basically where where we are is i thought we've got to do some we've got to do something because i'll give you an example if you're a youtuber i think there's difference between youtubers and influencers so a youtuber is, is putting out this is what's happening blah 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 but an influence has got to be someone who's going to actually, you know, put your hand up and go, well, let's try and do something. And I, and I think for me as a person, I know the difference between right and wrong. And I, and I think they've definitely made a mistake here because if you have Jaguar cars that were correct from factory and you have Land Rover cars that weren't correct from factory, that is a mistake. Yeah. And we're all paying that price with the keyless entry uh, and also some of the stuff on the back of the car. So... I feel quite strongly about it, and obviously I get a bit annoyed about it because it's, it's, you know, these cars are depreciating so fast now. Yeah, it, it's horrendous for owners, and and, it, and someone's got to do something. And you know, I'm happy to put my, you know, put this letter out there. So we've wrote to the CEO of Jaguar. We've given him 14 days, and really, if I just get the letter now, because it's easier for me. But and um, the main thing was is trying to keep it sort of simple. We don't want to go just sort of go at them and. Um, I've put on there, you know, a nice start saying, you know, we appreciate what you've done so far, which is this recall. Yeah. Um, but we do feel like there's more you need to do. Um, I did find out there were two recalls, but I can't find. So basically, the, the first problem they had was people going in through the boot. Yeah. And there was a recall for that, but I can't find a recall number. And I think it's just something that was just done when you had a service. Right. So maybe you've had it done and you didn't know. Then you've got the second recall, which is this 693 recall, which yeah. is around the transmitter not pulsing all the time, which gives you the problem there. So I've, so really my two questions were obviously we're being heavily penalised for insuring our vehicles. Um, 
and you had your own insurance which you don't have now and we are struggling to insure the vehicle have you got a plan and and by by that i mean are you going to step up to the plate and start giving us an insurance for yourselves or something because if you you're selling us i'll give you an example so someone i know that someone had a hundred and fifty thousand pound range rover they went to the show at the vehicle and it was thirty eight thousand to insure Wow, thirty-eight thousand so, pounds to insure. Yeah, so they didn't take the car. Yeah. So, so that, then, that, sorry, that that so was they're, a... they're in a predicament saying, I mean, that's a huge amount of money for insurance. Was that a new one? So they they were buying a new one from the showroom. Go to get a quote Waited on it. For, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving from whatever the Porsche Cayenne or whatever, and that. but these are all from comments and bits that are coming through. So then, obviously, they think, well, I can't take the car. So I yeah. think the car's still there. But then I think what happens is is that they will be offered a lesser amount yeah. for that car. So then they're into losing thirty thousand on a car that they haven't really been able to purchase because they so it's it's a very and a lot of people like I wouldn't overly check before I was buying about my insurance premium. I would probably do it on the day or just before. Yeah, especially would, if the know, I mean what are the what are the, be the same, you know. And these vehicles might have been ordered 12, 18 months ago? Yeah, so you've got a long wait. And I, I, as I say, you wouldn't even probably know the reg number till quite late on. No. You certainly wouldn't go get an insurance quote a year ahead of time. Mm. So right. That, that's obviously, you know, a big issue and people not being able to be insured at all. So then the second part was more um, these 2010s, 2017 owners. Yeah. Um, of obviously with the keyless entry are you going to do anything for them and, and I didn't want to go in there and go are you going to do it free I just said are you going to provide a cost upgrade because these cars are you know going to be six years old or a third party device to help owners that you approve yeah because we want something approved by them and then we can get some comfort but the, the, the big thing for me is it seems like a lot of the owners have put a lot of this protection in but their premiums are still sky high yeah which is what what we discussed on our last call for customers that may have had all the recalls yeah. and bought all of the equipment and fitted a stop lock and keep it in the garage and still can't get insurance i mean that that's essentially where you know we need to see some progress isn't it yeah so what i did this morning because the video went out last night i had a huge amount of views i had a lot of forms i couldn't really sleep again i thought right i'm gonna go out this morning so i went out this morning to a local Land Rover dealer. He only sells second-hand Land Rovers. Yeah, and he's only like fifteen minutes from me, and I've known him a while. I thought I'll go in there and have a chat with him. So I went in and said that you know, I'm Richard, he's Robert. Da, da, da. I said this these these Land Rovers. It's obviously a bit of a problem. And I can see you've got this ghost because in their reception it said, please give us your ghost code. Yeah, because apparently when they're doing the servicing, some people don't give it to them. They can't get in the car. Right. But I said, what well, what do you says best and he said yeah we, we are saying that you want to fit a ghost i said okay i said that's fine but what are your customers saying about insurance and they're saying it's going through the roof yeah and i'm going right okay yeah i know a bit about but i said what's the end what did, you know he said well i don't know he said i assume we, we, we won't be able to insure them in that i said well yeah i said i said well i'll give you an end i said if it carries on like this land rover aren't there as a business yeah that, that's how I so, see it. Yeah, so, so that's, that's where... So they're, they're not there. So you were selling second-hand Land Rover. You said, yeah, but Richard, there's nothing we can do. I said, well, but someone's got to do something. I said, this is, you know, I'm sort of, you know, not in buying and selling cars or whatever, but he is. So I'm thinking, well, his business is reliant on this because he's a second-hand Land Rover. Yeah. yeah. So I said, look, I'm trying to help, but give me some understanding about the ghost. and da -da -da -da. So I had a chat with him. I said, look, I'm not sponsored by anyone i don't want anyone involved in it but and i said i haven't done anything with go i mean i've had people offer me to do a three ghost the phantom all that and i've said look no I'm not doing anything because the main call needs to come from from jlr yeah so then driving back i'm thinking i think i'm going to need to do even more yeah i'm thinking maybe i set up my own insurance company Sounds right. good. so I come back, had a look at that, and there's obviously a huge amount of regulation. So I thought, right, I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Mike. I won't say their name now, but I've got a very big customer that's an insurance company. 
I think I said before, like second largest in the world. I thought, yeah. right, I'm getting on to this. So I spoke to them about my fleet of cars and just started talking to them about Land Rovers and that. And they were saying, look, we are we are still doing Land Rovers. Um, but obviously, Richard, you've got a lot of cars on here, like 25 cars. So we will do a deal for you. And he said, we'll do a deal for your sort of friends and family and things like that, because you've got a lot on there. And I thought, OK, I said, but what I want to do, I said, I want to try and see, could I be a wholesaler for you? Yeah. And I said, could you put together, so if we jointly went together and put a guide of, this is what you should have on your Land Rover, but in return for that, you will get a better premium. Yeah. Yeah, so so they've said, Richard, that's a really good idea. Da, da, da. So they're going to come back to me, but I just want to get ahead because if he doesn't return the letter, then, or, you know, come back to us at all, then I, I've got to get ahead of that. And my only way, I think, is on the... Because if I can get the insurance premiums at reasonable prices, then I'm going to hold the depreci- uh, depreciation back, aren't I? Absolutely. Otherwise, the depreciation is going to be so steep for people, they won't believe. You know, these these cars are going to drop like a stone. Well, Which they are already, you know. Yeah, because no one will buy new, but then no one would buy second-hand even at the reduced rates because of the insurance. So the only net result, as you say is it kills the brand completely. So if you can step in and become a specialist Range Rover broker through your network of people, you're actually doing a massive service to that whole community of owners. And that's, that's you know, what I've always wanted to do. I mean, I, I just as a person, I like helping people. So for me, I'm like, right, how can I use my skill of being an entrepreneur for like, you know, 32 years to think round this and not give up? Because it'd yeah. be easy to say, well, actually, JLR, I don't really care about us. I never, and I am seeing a lot, you know, I've, I've been chatting to owners today that I don't even know that have emailed me and I've rung them personally and they're telling me these stories that, you know, they've been, they want to take Land Rover to court. It's been three months. They do nothing. Da 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 da. Yeah. Um, but I, I think I could do something. And then I was just thinking that if you go to the effort of maybe you know we say let's just say that the ghost is the one, and then you you add a few more security features, and the insurance company is happy. I mean, we already know that you know the figures from auto watch on ghost was so low i think i can't remember what it was that it was like was it 18 cars out of 100,000 have been stolen with a ghost yeah they were very I mean, good that's yeah that's no- nothing really yeah relative to what's going on um so it seems like you've 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 got a bit of a plan here then for for owners yeah and i've got some other things up my sleeve as well um, that I'm doing in the background. I'm seeing that some vehicles are being recovered with some different devices on there. Um, yeah, I'm quite into it at the moment. I really want to get get an end goal, really, because I want to rip it up. Otherwise, you, you know, you're just making videos about the same thing, aren't you? Yeah. So when you put your video out with the response form, you've had a really good response from people who want something to happen and who want to stand behind you, basically, then? Massive, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot on here, you know, really saying, you know, thanks for your efforts, but, all, you know, these are what these are the problems we have. If it doesn't get sorted, I, I won't buy a Land Rover again. And there's a lot of that. Yeah. A lot of that going on. And, and they, a lot of people are saying they feel like, you know, they're being ripped off. Um, you know, some people are saying, you know, they've only had the car like two or three months. They didn't know about this problem. Yeah. Um, other ones are saying, you know, are the police accountable? You know, it's a lot of cars, isn't it? Well, you know, are they taking it seriously? <laughs> Again, and you go back into some of the stuff we touched on last time, you think, well, it's a lot of cars, and if a lot of them are going to the same location, i.e. to be shipped out of the country, it can't be that hard to find them, can it? Um, so there's, for me, there's a, there's a lot of questions that need to be asked, even before you start getting into the insurance thing. But it's quite exciting for you to be able to say, right, you know, I am going to get these owners together. We are going to try and do something. And if you're already having conversations with the insurers and it's sounding positive, do you think the insurers are trying to do anything? Are the insurers bothered or does it seem to you from the feedback you're getting that if you don't step in and do something, the insurers will just go, well, it's 25 grand, never mind, pay it or buy something well, else? 
I think some of the notes I've got here is that quite a few insurance companies won't insure Land Rovers now. So they, they, they've effectively got no skin in the game to be bothered about this. They just go, we don't want it on our book. That's that. Go get something else. We'll take another client. Yeah, only the ones that, that I've spoken to are really keen to do a deal, though. Yeah. For Land Rover. And they're keen. And, and the calls I've had this morning, I'm, I'm pretty confident that, you know, we can, we can broker some of Because, I mean, there's a, it's a huge amount of cars, Jeff. Yeah. And there's nothing, you know, it's a very good car. I mean, if you, it, also with a Range Rover and a Vocal, then people would aspire to have that type of car. I know it's not, not owned potentially by British owners now, but it's, it's been a British brand. It's a big you part know, of, as, you know, you know it's, a, it's a huge part of British motoring history. I mean, can you imagine, I, I might berate Land Rover and Range Rover on, on my channel, but can you imagine a world without them? It doesn't really quite make sense, even if you're not a huge fan. You know, it's such a big part of British motoring history to not have them as a brand and to have people not buying them because of something that could have been fixed it does seem a little bit ludicrous. Yeah, and I think that McLaren are in the same way. You know, I, I, I really wanted McLaren to do well, and I, and I still do. But obviously, they've gone about it in some ways the wrong way. And it, but the same with the Land Rover thing. I think they should have come out earlier. And I, and I think a lot of owners I'm seeing don't know about this recall. I know they say they've sent a letter, yeah, but they don't know. And I think if the communication was better... This could have been resolved a lot quicker, but I, I still can't get my head around it. Like, what is going on in their boardroom? Well, essentially, like, this is, you know, I, I, I can't believe that they're so far out of the, the network or the chain. Or and, and I'm hearing these are other things where people are saying they're ringing Landro and they're saying don't even know about a recall. Yeah, it's on the comments there. This is crazy. How can how can the the, the dealerships not know this recall's been there for ages? There's some pretty major customer service issues that you seem to be bringing up and that when I did some digging on the the Inchcape Jaguar Land Rover flood thing, I mean, some of the stories that came back from that from customers, um, it's it's pretty weak what's going on with Jaguar Land Rover. And, and like you say, what are the conversations that are going on in the boardroom? What are they saying about this flood that's happened? What are they saying about the thefts and the insurance? And And why hasn't there been a coordinated effort on their part to do something about all of those three things, which are pretty major, you know, the, the, the flood where people lost cars, the, the thefts which are through the roof, and then the insurance which has followed. Why have we not had some sort of coordinated something from JLR themselves? Well, I mean, and if you look at the fire at Luton, I know some people have messaged me saying, Richard, are you gonna do an update on that? I know you've done the video as well, but yeah. there was a recall on these cars for them catching fire. Oh, 100%, and it's become a bit you of a know, joke. You know, so, so that car that, was, that caught fire was potentially maybe one of those vehicles. Um, Absolutely, yeah. And then and then I know the thing is then they're saying about electrics is more, more fire and stuff. Um, but as I say, I think, I think when you went back before, look, from my point of view, I want Jaguar Land Rover to do well. Yeah. There is, there is nothing, there's not one bit of hate or thing against land that, that's not not my view I, I really want them to do well but i'm just being a business person and being in you know how i am i i just see that when you get quite a lot of people together and they start stamping their feet how many do you need to get stamping their feet before they just start going you know what i've had enough of it and i'll move to porsche yeah and i move. i mean there's there's some fantastic cars out there x5 yeah you know the, i think the x5 hybrids like probably the best car at the moment there's a lot of other cars people can buy but i feel like like you said earlier there's a loyalty isn't there you know with yeah. with land rover i think you know the, the king had a that it's just it's a thing isn't it it's, it is it is it's a british it's, thing it's and a, a national not treasure but it feels a bit like that. it well it, it, it does and you see people on the facebook comments even if they've had terrible experiences with cars they still wouldn't buy anything else so from a cultural point of view they need to do something to protect the brand because people will people will only take so much. But like, like the way you see it, I think they need to do the right thing by the customers. And I hate to see people, uh, you know, regardless of what car they've bought and for whatever reason, I don't like seeing people ripped off by big businesses. And I don't like seeing people fobbed off. And I know you're the same. So mm. I'm going to watch with interest as to see what happens from your, you know, two-week deadline that you've put on on this letter. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I think that if if I don't get a response, then we're going to personally deliver the letter to him. Yeah. So there's not there's no mucking around, and and at the end of the day, we we then have done everything, haven't we? If if it's personally delivered to his secretary, yeah, he's had the email. He's got. We're sending another email next week if he doesn't respond to say, look, can you please respond? Because you know, after them fourteen days happen, then I will put everything, all my efforts into getting an end. But I don't know where that is. If the insurance companies don't play ball. Yeah, and then the end is that you're potentially going to another brand, isn't it? Or you just keep the car forever. There could be a huge PR win for JLR here if they play their cards right with what you're trying to do, and it works the other way as well. Yeah, I mean, it's, I say for me personally, it doesn't. You know, it's, I just, I just feel like it's just like we were saying. You know, someone needs to to do it. You know, it's all good talking. And doing videos and all that it's all fine but this is now action isn't it yeah you know, this is like really thinking at a high level and, and getting an agreement that we're all happy with i mean with just the i mean I, I just find it just shocking on some of the comments on the insurances i'm just looking at a lot of the, the responses now i mean a lot of people say they're on their you know 10th land rover vehicle yeah and then they'll think you know that's what you said earlier you know they they love that yeah, they don't. They... And to the truth, as you know, Jeff, it's one. Of, it's probably the best off-road system, whether they go off-road or not. Yeah, that system yeah. they developed with yeah. fantastic technology. Yeah, yeah. You know these cars. If you look back at all they were going through deserts, you know swamps. You know they were the car, weren't they? Yeah. So to have built a brand on that heritage and then to lose it over something like this and bad management of this situation would be, would be a real shame. So we'll see. So I think so. I know more. So next week, I, I know a bit more on my insurance area. Yeah. Which I know sounds a bit crazy, but I, I'm I'm quite entrepreneurial. I mean, I could set up a company in the next five minutes if I wanted to. Yeah. But I need to make sure that I've got the right people behind it. We're doing it correctly. Yeah. And we just need a you know a backer. I mean, I think this insurance company are going to back me. I really do. I, I've said, you know, they're they're at the same, but they they are saying to me, Richard, we want to insure Land Rover owners. And I said, okay, well let's let's get together, let's do it right. Pick, and I mean, they sent me some stuff an email earlier with exactly what they want on the car. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to say, well, there's some additional things we might be able to do because I've got a lot of contacts with security companies. Yeah. So I think I could maybe add a little bit more to it just to secure it even more. Okay, so challenge the road insurance services coming soon. Challenging everything, I think. I, th I think that's the only way. <laughs> I, th I think we do need to challenge everything at the minute. I think we do. Oh, yeah. but I, th I think the thing is, though, if you don't challenge everything, then you end up getting steamrolled from every direction at the moment. So getting people together and getting people to stand up, whether it's to do with this or the flood or whatever else it might be that's going on at the moment, something going on with farmers and something going on over here, it seems there's something going on everywhere, and sometimes people need well, to look. You, look at, you know, Harry's Gary, I was watching quite a lot of videos last night, and I was watching Harry's uh, farm. Yeah. And he was saying that this program, and I, and I was just watching it all the way through, and he's just detailing what is actually correct, because all the stuff I've put up on these videos are facts. Yeah. They're not made up. They're not, and I haven't distorted the truth. You know, the image is what JLR's CEO is saying. We have a major problem with our cars being stolen. Okay, yeah. that's fine. So that's a fact. That's what he said. And not people just making up stuff. Yeah. You know, and oh, yeah. But, um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting few weeks to Christmas. But yeah, I really, really, you know, dedicated my time. I really want to get this, this right, you know. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll I, keep... I won't be able to buy one, will I? No, exactly. And I think at the end of it, you, you'd quite like to have another Range Rover at some point. As soon as I get the insurance thing done, I'll buy one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, well, we'll keep in touch and we'll no, see thanks, see where things end up over the next few weeks and I'll catch up with you again. Okay. All right. Cheers, Rich. Bye-bye. Cheers.